Hey there, everybody. This is Magnum Pi. I'm here with Teku Golgotha Vahilo and Dark Templar, and we are Initiative Zero. Thanks for joining us again for Rifts, the Devouring Swarm, where we talk about the weather and other great things. And Rifts. Um, yeah, Teku, Golgi, Vahilo, DT, how we doing? Well, still doing good. Too bad. Let's get at it. Better, better. Let's get it. Still on the uh, still on the phone iPad combination here, so rolls might take a little bit longer for me. Yeah, that's okay. Living the dream. Living, Living the dream. That's all right. That's all right. As long as it works, we have that dedication, right? The sanctity of game night and oh my whatnot. God. Always, always protect the sanctity of game night. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, for those of you joining us, uh, we always love to hear from you. If you like our stuff, hit like, subscribe. Uh, put comments down below. We're always very happy to hear from you. We do have a Discord that you can join us on if you want to talk about this game or any other sorts of role-playing games. And, uh, yeah, we we play a bunch. So um, we just love to hear you and uh, have that interaction. When we last left our intrepid adventurers, they had received uh, an edict of planetary dis distress, I believe it is, from uh, from Laszlo. Uh, from the Council of Learning in Laszlo that pretty well confirms all of the worst fears they had about the visions that they were getting of this coming devouring swarm, that there's going to be uh, something in this part of the world that is going to possibly threaten the entire planet. And, um, and so uh, it was decided that there needed to be both an offensive and a defensive uh, stance and already coming out from that uh, meeting with the leadership of Finton, there were already two uh, prophets of doom standing in the town square, almost uh, inciting a panic if it not for the quick uh, psionic abilities of Senate and the imposing shape of Sir Luke, as well as Portland's fatherly disappointment um, that that silenced them and made them run off, but. It's a taste of things to come as we begin this next episode. So, yeah, uh, we'll kind of advance it by a day or so just to give you a chance to have recovered ISP and PPE. And, uh, yeah, Gotrick, you've got your, your Hunter mobile gun robot uh, as a mode of transportation now. What do you guys want to do? Well, I think we have to get together to think of a plan. Like, are we going to... I think the... We had basically decided that we were probably going to, uh, you know, take the offensive, right? So, uh, uh, but let's talk about the plan. What is that going to look like? I think if we set up a spot kind of closer to the coast, maybe not quite at the coast, and, uh, you know, just kind of have a little sight there and kind of rove around every now and then, and then uh, maybe every six seven days or something we you know come back to finton resupply and then you know head back out to the coast that's kind of what i was thinking now i'm coming out of my head yeah that's an idea i disagree with that senate what do you think is there any way for you because you're much more powerful psychic than i am uh to get an idea of where the others are mustering like again he said there are a lot of cyber knights that are are, are, are moving towards the east uh, i don't suppose there's any possible way to figure out where they might be going i mean i'm sure i could find them but i don't think they're mustering as such everyone's just like the champions are rallying to this region i don't think there's a former or a formal meetup right no that's Unlikely, yeah, that's true. But considering we have no idea where they're going to go, I mean, the entire eastern coastline's like several thousand kilometers in length. Oh, squared, yes. But it's it's almost like we have to. I am surprised that Laszlo's not more organized about this. We, it's about covering the area to catch this incursion at its onset and so it's very much a luck of the draw who finds it and if we find it 
I think maybe one of the most important things that we could get or do is, again, the odds of it coming directly to us are pretty astronomical, but say that it does. Uh, is there any way for us to get the information to Laszlo and any other surrounding, you know, and, and any of the others that one might be able to provide some support? And if they did, like, could they even get to play? To, to I actually, him? I do have a skill that would allow us to do that. It's called a radio. And... Yeah, I was I was gonna ask if I had it. I'm gonna assume that I do uh, have a radio in my shop. Well, you probably have a radio in your shop. Yeah. I can't imagine but that you wouldn't. Yeah. What's the distance? Like how 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 far does the radio? Good old good old ham radio. Even even a standard radio is. I mean, it gets the information out there and. It's and somebody, not a somebody can not a, maybe pass it on. That's it. If if it starts to relay, then I mean that ball gets rolling on its own. But nothing and if, about if we're out on, if we're out on the coast and not so much in the mountains, maybe we'll have some better range. And if other, like if Atlanteans bring a radio or something like that, well, you know, and if people say, "Hey, we need we need help down in this area, or here we can we can get on the move." The the issue that might be challenging is the Appalachians are in the way too, so that might prevent, you know, or might well, it, it maybe it wouldn't prevent it, but it might make it much more challenging to get the information out to you know at distance. But it is well, the best spot. I've also got to ask in the way for who, and I'll do the slow pan over in the direction of Portland. I mean, I'm no expert on magic, but. The designation Leyline Walker carries a certain connotation. It does, but it's also quite dangerous. Like to send one person. He's already sent multiple people. Yeah. I know. Like all of us and the truck. So what's to stop him if we don't get a radio response immediately? Withdrawing, trying our luck down the ley line grouping up and then trying again. No, I, I get that. And I think that that would be the best approach. But uh, again, it's not without risks. But again, we're about to fight potentially the worst, most dangerous threat the planet has ever seen. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? And really, we're, we're talking about how can we get other people to tell us where the risk is so we can actively go and fight it or how people can come to where we are. Well, so let's, worth, let's not really talk about risks. It might be worth firing up the radio now just to see if anyone's out there and try and coordinate with them so that they're at least aware. That's an idea. Yeah, I'll fire it up. Okay. So Are there any like usual... Fre I'm assuming there's going to be some usual frequencies that people might use in this area. Well, you do have some connections to a variety of other... Um, you know, operators and the like, like operators are typically are wandering mechanics, right? That are, that are kind of keeping old technology in repair and functional. That's what an operator's right. kind of role is. Um, so you do maintain a loose bit of connection in that way, I suppose. Um, that's why you have your, your bonus to your find contraband skill and things like that. So you probably do have some channels that you that you will scan and or broadcast on. Um, by just to to note, a field radio, which is a backpack style radio transmitter, right, which might be essentially what yeah. you've set up in your garage, has a range of sixty miles in a city, or um, any place that has radio clutter or disturbance. But if you have a clear signal and you're in the wilderness or something like that. It's 150 miles, so 240 kilometers. So that's that's quite a distance, you know. That's not uh, the worst. Pretty thing. good. It's decent. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's not a ham radio. You're not going to be connecting with people in Australia or something like that. But you know, it's uh, it's a that's a pretty wide radius, right? So, so are we kind of around like present day, like Baltimore? You're closer to Aberdeen. If you're looking at a map, you could send a signal easily to New York from where you are right now. 
right? With obstructions, Philadelphia. Right. So, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. So then we should we really load that, up we and can say that the red coats are coming. Yeah, <laughs> we should really load up and wire up the uh, the radio to the robot. Well, the robot has a radio. Out. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, case, all robot vehicles have radios. Can I can I scan the radio to see if there's any chatter of what's going on, or um, like if there's if there's a radio like a channel that some uh, some other operators would use, and just kind of go to that one and put out a call. Okay, what do you want to put out a call for? Um, I just want to say like, you know, who's who's on this channel? Um, have you heard about this uh, this devouring swarm? Um, Group headed out from what town are we in? Finton. Uh, Finton. Finton. Group heading out from Finton, um, headed to the coast. Um, so just basically to defend from any dangers that might come. So basically, just like, like a connect with who's us out on there, this channel, who's doing things. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Join our Discord, all of that stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, radio communicator in a robot vehicle has a long. Robot vehicles have long range directional communication systems with an effective range of 500 miles, oh, um, as well as a directional short range radio with a range of five to 10 miles. So yeah, you can, you can reach quite a ways. I mean, 500 miles is double That's that good. distance to New York. So you can probably contact Laszlo. Yeah. <laughs> like, but there we go then. <laughs> yeah. Just to see what other people are doing. If there's anything that we're not uh, not thinking about, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sure. You. Uh... I mean, even just general, please advise of incursions, and we'll do what we can to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can you could to that. Laszlo is definitely within the range of the long range ra long range radio on your robot vehicle, if there's no obstructions and stuff, right? So if you were on a high, very high point. Um, you could yeah. turn as long as it's directional though. So you have to face the direction that you want to be transmitting to. Right. But. Yep. Cool. Uh, give me a radio basic check then to make sure that you, uh, scan, let's see what you scan and, and the like. Don't be afraid to tell the mechanics this one either. You're good. With a seventy-seven percent chance, telemechanics would have oh, only given him yeah. a three, yeah, three yeah, percent yeah. bonus. So don't yeah, waste the ISP. Relevant. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah. So you put the word out there. You do receive uh, some comms back on that channel that there are people um, heading into the east to uh, to look for the devouring swarm. That this is uh, you know a danger. Uh, you also hear back a few um, a few calls on radio about um, more kind of doomsday prophet type stuff that the the end is nigh, right? Save yourselves. This is foolhardy. Don't be don't be tr don't be a hero, right? Don't try to be a hero, right? If you have a place that you can that you can hunker down and uh, do it, right? Plus the things like that. So you get you get a bit of a mix of response, but um, you know they they uh they kind of uh come in as you i'm assuming you're not only sending this once right you're going to be doing it every so often sending out a, a message yeah absolutely you know how long do you want to keep sending that message out for um i don't know just maybe like you know as we're packing our stuff up every time i kind of sit in the robot vehicle yeah. Like okay. I'll like if I'm if I'm bringing stuff in, like I'll sit in the robot vehicle, send the message, and then as I'm moving it in, organizing, I'll listen to who's responding. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. And again, just so you guys are all aware, this uh, Hunter Mobile gun, which is what it's called, is 32 feet high. It's 20 feet wide and uh, 14 feet thick, and it weighs 34 tons. So it is not a small thing. All right, well, before we go, because I think we're going to be heading out pretty soon, uh, before we go, I'm going to talk to Frommeline to let him know the plan. Okay, you inform him, and uh, he wishes you luck, and 
He says that he'll do his best to defend this place as he always has. Yeah, say that uh, you know, you know, keep in radio contact if anything happens. Uh, we'll be there as soon as we can as well. Will do. Are we all going for a ride or? Are, uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. You guys How do you guys? <laughs> well, I think that if uh, you've got the vehicle, we might as well take the vehicle, right? And uh, we got enough room for all of us, even my big ass. I put your like your stuff is already in the vehicle as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're okay, so there's there's minimal storage space in this in this thing. Okay, it's got about four feet of storage, right? But I um, I think with like given that there's seven, yeah, seating you can, for seven. That's right. We're only going with four. I can put stuff on the that's correct passenger seat. Yeah, I'm just saying that you know as far as a trunk goes, right? It's got. Minimal, minimal non-passenger storage. Yeah. So, there you are. You load it up in a warm day at the end of April, 1.02 PA. Where are you guys headed to? uh, The inlet of uh, the river and uh, formerly Chesapeake Bay, I think, is a good place to start. Okay. So, you guys are heading down to that uh that coastline there and um the coastline you know, the entire time that we're driving down here i'm going to be complaining due to my lack of alcoholism and oh yeah going through withdrawal <laughs> going through withdrawal just want you guys to know that Okay, so we we literally just talked about what we're bringing, and you did not say alcohol. <laughs> yeah, just throwing that out there. <laughs> that's on you. That's, that's kind of on you. So you guys want me to bring a feed into my alcohol? I say, no, no, no. no I no, don't. No, that's no, no, Fuck you. I'm glad you didn't bring you it. Don't get it both ways. You don't get it both ways. <laughs> no, I brought, no, a, I, I no, brought a first aid no. kit if you want to drink the the rubbing yeah. alcohol. No, no, that's no, that's, that's, an that's an alcoholic would at least attempt, man. An yeah, alcoholic would at least attempt. What kind of role play is this? No, My I am. Well, I am trying. <laughs> minus to keep minus clean fifty here. points. I'm trying to keep it clean here. That's all I'm saying. Bring, I'm just trying to be in, the you, best you brought, coherent person possible that yeah, I can be. You brought a toothbrush, the, but no, no Listerine. I don't believe this for a moment. Be the best Portland that you can be. Listen for a second. The fact that I didn't think about that toothbrush and toothpaste is going to come real in handy when you guys smell like your breath smells like shit every fucking morning. And you have to talk to each other, and mine's fresh. Taking care right, of teeth is really probably, important. It, Taking I care mean, very important. So I, I would assume that was part of our like accoutrements no, that we were going to You bring. would never assume that. You would never assume. What do you mean? I assume that in normal no, life. No. Whenever I travel somewhere, you're not a place. nice in normal life. So no, you don't think that. You don't know ever. that. You don't know that. Yes, I do know that. I know who you are. I know where you live. I know so much about you. Are you kidding me? We're pretty good friends. Like, yes, but I'm a cyber knight, so damn right I'd have things to make myself look presentable, particularly given my... Look presentable, sanity. not smell presentable. So, yes. That's the same thing. Knights in the olden it's... days, like medieval times, would not have brushed their fucking teeth either. They would have lost their teeth way, way back, but they look really good normal. No, no one gives a shit. You're this not is, fucking... I'm... I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see how Magnum plays this. Is this going to be a deduction of points for not playing in character, or is this going to be an addition of points for a small act of self-sacrifice? I don't know. I have to think about it. I have to think about <laughs> it. I do know that Portland is trying to get clean, right? But yeah, I am trying to get clean. Yeah. You fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh so, God. yeah. Uh, anyway, I. I why did Why did we? I Why don't we send you to rehab be... instead of... This I more... said, no, no, no. That's why. Oh, Try wow. to make you go to rehab. rehab. <laughs> <laughs> My God. And so... I sing that song the entire time, too. That's yeah. right. Every so time he thinks about the... alcohol. <laughs> this sets the tone for the road trip. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yes. a hell of a road trip. Where you're going, you don't have any roads. You make your way across the... Uh, the bit of Maryland there to the the nearest uh, coastline and follow it up to where the Susquehanna River uh, connects uh, empties into the what used to be Chesapeake Bay and yeah it's um, at this time there's a there's a bit of uh, kind of mist and fog 
out on the water as you look out uh, and survey the area. Uh, there wasn't a lot that you came into contact with as you make your way out. This this robot vehicle moves at has a max speed of 70 miles an hour. Um, you, I don't think we're we're booking it that fast overland, but um, but you certainly. Oh, I mean, I, I wanted to, I wanted to take it out for a spin and see what this thing could do. Sure, but you, so, yeah, you don't want to risk also like falling. Take, take my <laughs> take take my Lambo and like you know feed a little speed to my ride. Yeah, if you if you exceed a safe speed in rough terrain like that, you would have to make a piloting check to make sure that you don't fall over, right? Like, or crash. So you probably don't right. want to risk crashing right now. Um, so we won't say that you were cranking it at 70 miles an hour going over land, but you might have been going 40, you know, which is still pretty quick compared to going on yep. foot. And so you, you do make it here very quickly. Um, and yeah, the uh, you can you, the audio uh, receptors, right? The mics on the outside of the vehicle pick up the crashing of the of the sea against the shore as you stand there and uh, at the edge of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, yeah, you now when you're piloting a robot vehicle, um, the pilot and the co-pilot have access to sensor systems. So if you have the sensory equipment skill or sensor system skill, I can't remember what they call it in this version, you can roll that and you will uh, you uh, can I do have to sensory use, equipment. Yeah, to use like the radar or any of the other sensors that this vehicle has. Yeah, so you don't really pick up anything. No, um, one off again. Are you kidding me? It's a you're you're nothing if not consistent, so you know. But uh, yeah, the sensors don't really pick up a lot. Again, this uh, this vehicle would have radar that can track up to forty eight targets out to out to thirty miles. Um, it's got a combat computer that calculates and stores data, targeting computer that basically tracks up to thirty or sorry. The tracks up to and identifies targets, so you've got a you've got quite a, a good sensory system here. You've even got spotlights on the front of the vehicle, that sort of thing. And so you um, you sweep with the radar and, and check things out. There's no uh, no uh, notable blips on the scope, and um, yeah, who's riding co-pilot? I think Senate was. Well, there's co-pilot and there's gunner, right? I'd probably be gunner. Okay. Who's riding co-pilot then? Who's my co-pilot here? Well, I need to sit in a place where there's enough space, but uh, yeah, I could be your co-pilot. Okay, cool. Um, Sir Luke, do you have uh, sensory equipment or anything like that? I have sensory equipment. So what kind of sensory equipment would I would I have? It's a I mean, skill. Yeah, it's just, a skill. Just the skill. Oh, okay. So sensory equipment... I don't think I do actually. Yeah, I don't have any sensory equipment. Okay. Or sensory skills, no. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, then there you are. And uh you weren't expecting it, but uh the cameras and viewing ports all of a sudden uh give you a sight that you didn't detect on your radar. The um what you see kind of flowing out um from the the mist out on the water is um, quite an impressive sight. It looks almost like a, uh, a sort of Viking longboat. It's made of wood. Uh, it has uh, large sails on it. Uh, and it's not floating on the water, but rather, rather it's traveling through the air uh, and approaching the shore. This boat has a rather large eye in the bow as well. It's almost like a cat's eye that seems to be moving around in in the socket that it's situated in uh, and looking around as it comes out of the mist. It's uh, virtually silent and beautiful to behold. It's made with incredible craftsmanship and it seems to have a uh, a dragon's head for the prow of the ship 
as it uh, glides almost effortlessly through the air. Is there anything you guys would like to do as this comes into your visual range there? Do we recognize it? Like, is it a something that anybody might be familiar with? With a Under particular dragon. remedy? Um, does anybody have any sort of Rift's history, like post-apocalyptic Rift's history? Probably. I do. I have General, I have Laszlo. It'd be General. Nice. All right. So, um, yeah, the only thing that you know about this is that it was identified um, in in reports of the early incursions of the Splugorth on the eastern shores of North America from Atlantis. So what you are seeing here is a Splugorthian flying ship. Yeah, I'm going to call that out to the others. Well, that's not a good thing. I don't think that's exactly the devouring swarm, but... It's still a threat. Not a friendly. Well, it could be a friendly if it's uh, coming to help the cause. Uh, did you read the uh, the, the, the scroll? Uh, they are not interested in participating in any planetary defense. So can I run my radar mm -hmm. again? Maybe this one's different. What are you hoping to do that's different now? Um, basically see that they've been picked up on my radar. Yeah, the ping is on the radar now. Now you see what it oh, is. Oh, okay, I see it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I target them? Uh, yeah, you totally can. Okay. I, w I would do what I could to avoid... Do I, do I need to go into the gunner seat, or...? No, no, you can control everything from your seat. I'm already up here, so... Yeah, but he can um, he can take control. Yes. I just want to turn to Senate and say, "We firing on these guys." And I'll start looking at the controls, going, "Well, you're the boss, Applesauce. What are we doing here? This isn't the swarm, but it's not a friendly, so there's merit to poking holes in it, I guess." Or do I wait until they fire on us first? Is it coming towards us? Uh, yeah, it's well, not not specifically toward you, but it is t coming to the coast, right? It's coming to the the beach, and it's actually coming down in altitude as well. Yeah, I feel like this is probably the time to start addressing the problem with the giant artillery piece because I'm, for one, a little surprised that the Atlantean isn't more upset about this. Oh but, no, I'm upset. It's just it's we have to be cautious about this because they're this is they're very dangerous. <laughs> well I mean this might be the moment to fire up the old uh telemechanics. Okay, you can activate telemechanics, sure. I am one with the machine. Cool. My, are with my machine? Are you taking over my machine? Well, I was going to use the guns, and that's kind of how I go about doing it. Yeah, I mean, I was going to use the big face gun, nose gun. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead. If you don't need to be flailing arms, do it. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, let's fire on this sucker. Okay, I need you to roll initiative first. So you're going to roll initiative using your, not your combat sheet, but rather your vehicle sheet, vehicle tab. Hold on. A lot's happening, and this iPad is old and slow. Cancel that roll. Okay, vehicle feet. Initiative. That's ah, still the same thing. Minus one. That sucks. All right. So they go first, and the sh do they do they see me? Do they know that I'm planning to fire? You don't know what they know, but the ship vanishes. It's oh, gone. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 
Let's continue the like patrolling, and we might come across it. I mean, do you have radar or anything? Maybe you can pick up if they're invisible. I mean, I mean, if it vanishes, I'm assuming it vanishes off my radar. No, nope, I'm just talking about your visit. I'm call. just talking about your visible, your visual. Sorry, your visual um, mm-hmm. sense here. Invisibility and it, teleportation exist, so it could be one of the two. You might want to give oh. it a sweep. I'll check my radar. Do you want me to roll for checking my radar? You need to roll to check your radar, your sensory systems. Yeah, you do not... You do not pick it up on your radar. Do I have access to a terminal back here? Can I try? You can just connect with your mind. Oh. You can you can just access the radar information with your mind at an eighty percent chance, right? So, oh, so can I just roll that or? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you do not pick them up on the radar. And I'll call up and say I don't know what you're seeing, but I'm not seeing a thing. So maybe they did just peace out, or I don't know. Maybe it's an illusion. Yeah, and I have them gone too. So. But we'll keep scanning. Maybe we were the flying boat the whole time. Who knows? And the friends along the way. Yep. All right. Well, let's find a place where we can set up camp as well after we've done, like, patrolled and, and uh, you know, someplace maybe with uh, that's as you know, high as we can get. Well, I'd want to put my robot vehicle a little bit into the trees, but just keeping the sensory sticking out of the top of the trees and we can kind of camp camp in the uh in the edge just kind of around it okay yeah, i mean absolutely. it's it's still very early in the day right yeah like you guys have we, barely I'm, I'm just, traveled yeah i'm just saying like you know if we find a place not to say that we should camp there but you know know a place where we might set up if there is a place that looks strategically uh you know strategic essentially right okay so you're just kind of looking for spots that you can kind of hold yeah. up in. Okay, sure. Kind of incidentally, yeah. Okay. Guys that roam around, uh, following the seacoast, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Kind of spying for spots yep. where you could stand in the, you know, the, the trees obviously are a little ways back from the coast. But um, you can make it there fairly quickly. And yeah. You continue to uh, to patrol here. Um, are you going further up the river? Are you going further down the seacoast? We want to do the seacoast. All right. Cool. I would say in the direction that that boat came from, or maybe mm-hmm. the direction that boat was going. Let's say the way it was going. Okay. So you head to where it would have come into contact with the land if it landed. All right. Yeah. Cool. As we're going along, can I... Uh ask Portland if there are any rifts or ley lines around here like is this an area known for that um, typically typically it's not very uh, densely um, magic right you know that there is a, a ley line about a day's journey to the south or half day's journey to the south right that's where you guys uh, found the rift so you could head toward that one from that one, he can detect other ley lines and nexus points and stuff like that. I mean, he can, he's, he's detected them or felt them at a, or tried to at a distance before. Right. So I can only detect probably around 40 miles right now. Yeah. Away. Okay. And there's nothing playing up. No, no. Um, okay. nothing, nothing new. There's that same, there's that same yeah. ley line, but yeah. It's, okay. It doesn't have a lot of... Yeah, there's not a lot of density to that. Uh, not, not a lot of density of magic in this area. However, yeah, he doesn't detect any. Not within... Not not nearby, anyway. So. Okay. Yep. But you guys head in that general direction there, um, making your way down the uh, down the coast. And uh, you note that the the ground is. I mean, you're you're going on sand, right? So it's not the not the most sturdy of ground, but that's okay. 
the sea kind of crashing into the into the shore there as you make your way along and uh yeah you stand at uh where there's a rather large gouge in the beach looks almost uh like a wedge uh cut into the beach from the from the ocean right so maybe like the hull of a boat yeah maybe like the hull of a boat that's invisible do i sense any uh magic being used you can sense up to 400 feet Mm -hmm. yeah i would say that within 400 feet there's magic for sure that was in use um yeah okay hey guys within 400 feet around here magic we use like maybe keeping something invisible can i run my radar again <laughs> um yeah you can take a look at the radar again sure oh it'd be really handy if somebody could see what i'd say see something unseen but i don't think anybody has that skill Anybody have see the invisible? I might. Orlin, do you have it? I see the invisible, yeah. Oh. So with magic being used, do you want to see if you can recognize, like, see what's going on there? Um, it allows me to see astral beings, entities, elemental ghosts, objects, and forces and creatures that can turn invisible or are naturally invisible. So like a ship, potentially. Yeah, I can use it. Sure, I will use the four <laughs> PPE. Do I see anything? All right. And um, you're in the robot vehicle right now, though, right? So you might need yes. to open up a hatch and look out because uh, anything that you're seeing right now is being filtered through the video input. So it's whether, like, if the camera doesn't see it, right? Well, you're, what you're actually looking at is a video monitor, right? And the video monitor is not invisible. All right, well, so you, that. So you, yeah, you can open up a hatch and look out and take a peek. I will do that. Do All I right. see anything with the success on my sensory equipment? Nope. As I take a peek, actually, this is going to be a bad idea. As I take a peek, I'm going to turn invisible before I take a peek, just in case they're aiming at my head or something's aiming at my head. Yeah, for As sure. I take this peek. So you you turn invisible, yeah. Okay, then and I pop my head out of the hatch. Or yeah, you open up the emergency hatch and take a look with your C invisibility. And what you see is the ship is actually flying away from the coast now. Um, it is... Uh, heading back out to sea again through the air but what you see on the beach close to the trees are this large creature at the back wearing the armor that has a staff with this kind of worm in it what you see are um you see uh, four of them as well as another one that looks like that wearing similar armor but it has big giant bat wings coming out of its back okay and they are they are moving uh, toward the tree line they definitely see the robot vehicle so they're looking like back over their shoulder at the robot vehicle as they make their way toward the tree line these things are not small they are uh, eight, to ten, eight to ten feet tall. These beings, and oh, um, yeah, they are making their way um, toward the tree line. That's to, like take to, to cut us off, essentially. Uh, well, you guys were making your way down the beach, and uh, so the tree line would be to the right of the robot vehicle. They are running toward the tree line. So, so they're going um, around us. Yeah. Uh, well, they're not trying to get necessarily behind you. They're just moving perpendicular to where you are right now. They're straddling us is what they're doing. They're straddling us. They're going to the tree line. Yeah. So yeah. if you are... I'm going to relay this information of these 
or giant things. Yeah, you can uh, you can sh- either shout it, it, you can either shout it down in, or you can step, or you can get back in and close the hatch to relay the info. Your choice. Yeah, I'm going to close the hatch because I feel like they're going to shoot at us. Okay. Um, with this this worm staff. How the fuck they are though? Do I? Uh, I don't know if you know what they are. Um, what sort of what sort of skills do you have that are going to let you know? Uh, recognize creatures of magic. I might do it. Yeah, it's it's more of a DB than than a creature of magic. I have I have DB lore. Okay, that'll work. Yeah, you you have not encountered these things before. All right. So I'm going to describe it what I saw to them. Yeah. I don't know if they know what the fuck that is. They don't. They want to roll for it, but uh, we might engage very shortly. Yeah, they don't. They probably don't know that we could see them. So maybe a good well, blast. We can't see they, them are... either, right? They don't they seem to. They... they don't seem to be appearing on the on the scopes, right? Uh, yeah, your so your sea invisibility closed. worked. Yeah. Mm. And they also radiated magic when you looked at them. Yeah. They're magical, and they are coming for us, or at least heading us off. So, we they're also invisible. So, we got a good idea where they are. I mean, if we if we know, we could blast them. If they're are they close together? Uh, they, they were. Are... Go ahead. I was going to say they're running in a group. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if we could see where well, you could see where they are. If you could give us directions, we could blast them. You want me just to point? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure, we can point. I, I can. The best of them. You know, you're talking to like actually air right now, right? Because. Yeah. No. We're just we're we're used to this by this point. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, we could, if you want me to. Well, I mean, obviously, we won't be able to see you pointing, but you know, tell us, you know, what are they close to? What are they next to? Like, what what? What group of trees are they next to? Do? That's fine. I will do that. But before I do that, I'm going to finally life blast you all before we we start shooting at these people. How's that? A life blast can only be directed at one target or person at a time, or two by touch. So you can touch two people will, at a time. Yeah. Sure. I will touch two of them. Cool. So you will have to cast it twice then. That's fine. I will take off another 15. Yeah. To cast it twice. One sec. <laughs> this is uh, your progress. Um, yeah, uh, let's see if you know this spell permanently. Nope, not yet. So give me a d20 roll, if you would. Okay, a four. All right, so uh, you did not cast it properly, so you spent the PPE and it failed, unfortunately. Because it is. So when you learn a new spell from a source like that, um, you only have so many. If you read what it has on the spell, at the very top, learning progress, bonus plus zero, chance to know permanently 10%. Right? Uh, So right now, you. you miscast the spell you can cast it again for sure that's not going to prevent you it's just that you used the ppe up fuck it no way ppe too precious right now oh my gosh. all right can i, I tell them stuff? where they need to shoot yeah. okay you guys are effectively firing blind then uh he points in that general direction well, but we can just not go that way one or the other shit yeah, part of me not, wants to not attack them when I can't see them. Because then if they attack back and I still can't see them, I'm kind of hosed. Yeah, like if you could mark a location for him to target, that would work. But I think if you have a little laser pointer or something. I will shoot a rock to where they need to fucking go. There you go. Quite accurate. So yeah, basically you you shoot where he's shooting. I would say that that would reduce the penalty from minus nine to minus three. But um, yeah, if you're going to do something like that, I would would recommend firing a missile 
rather or four up to six <laughs> rather than uh the the yeah. um yeah because that's got an area that it affects like you're talking my forearm rock and hunters that's right because it has yeah the 20 foot radius of that frag that's correct yeah and not my crotch gun that's right not the not the crotch gun I am aiming for the first guy, dude number one, when I launch okay. this thing. All right. The first guy, you meaning the guy with the wings or just the first? Number, yeah, let's go with the guy with the, with the wings, sure. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Cool, you get a plus two to strike. I can't. <laughs> you roll Can you roll for me? I can't roll. My... Okay. My keyboard's not functioning properly. A nine. So a nine will hit. Okay. How much damage does your rock do? Uh, 1d6 plus love. Will that be 1d6 plus four? Mega okay. damage. So eight. eight points of mega damage as you fire a rock in that general direction. Um... Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see the impact there, Gotrick, and you can uh, use weapon systems to try to lock onto that spot. Okay, let me get to my skills. Weapon systems, where are we here? I'm probably going to fail, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll probably fail by one point. No, you've locked on. <laughs> hey! So... So again, it's heavy energy winner, winner. bonus plus your uh, plus your bonus from weapon systems. I believe you also have weapons engineer. Also gives you an additional bonus if you are successful on that skill check. Okay, so let's do my weapons engineer skill. Yeah. Oh, box didn't pop up. There you go. So you're going to roll a yes. d20 with a plus five. Um, how many missiles do you want to launch? Um, did Portland tell us how many people were there? Yep, he said there were five. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it says so on my uh, on my vehicle sheet. It says that I have eighteen missiles. You can launch up to six. Um, so, I'm a, oh, shit. so I can launch up to six. That's right. Um, let's launch four of this, four of them. And I can I kind of do them like in a line so it's like I'm carpet bombing them? Or? Uh, you're basically just launching a volley. You don't really get to target the volley. Okay. right? You're shooting at that right. spot, but they do have a blast radius. So whatever happens, right. uh, it, what, you'll hit the target. And that target will take full damage, and then the 15-foot radius around that target takes half damage. Hey. Cool. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm just ro rolling a d20 plus... Five. Um, d20 plus five? Or am I rolling my weapon systems on my sheet? So, yeah, roll that one. Um, yeah, roll that one and then add, a, add one bonus. But you said I was at a minus three penalty... Plus that's, five to strike, so is that a plus two? That's correct. Yeah, total plus two. So you're gonna, so your total uh, will be minus uh, minus two is the total modifier you're gonna put in. Bang bang. All right, a thirteen will hit, and you are going to do. Uh, you said you launched four missiles. <laughs> So that is going to be um, 72 mega damage to, uh, to that target. Um, he's going to try to dodge. He is not successful. 
So he takes 72 yeah. mega damage. And, uh, and the other guys are all going to try to dodge. Dodge, dodge, dodge. All dodge. right. And one of them, the other, the other ones dive out of the blast radius. Uh, and the, uh, last guy, I think they still take half damage, but he takes the, the, uh, what is it? 36 points of damage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you light it up and, <laughs> There's big explosions, there's some craters, and uh, a lot of the, the uh, sand gets scattered and settles down as five fragmentation missiles explode and basically obliterate a, uh, a 20 foot radius each. So there's a rather large hole in the ground now. Um, yeah, you do not see anything else though. So you did hit them as from a player perspective but from a character perspective nobody's showing up on your scope and uh can i yell and say portland what what do we got oh we should have said portland what are your elf eyes see come on these are great references for dodging here guys what do i see <laughs> okay you see um yeah you see uh a bunch of uh, guys kind of standing themselves up and pointing their staves at the robot. Brace for impact, guys. And with that, we will call it the end of this particular episode. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you heard, let us know down below. Leave a, leave a comment and hit like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Join us on our Discord. I'm Magnum Pi. I'm here with Teku, Golgotha, Vahilo, and Dark Templar. And we are Initiative Zero. Yeah.